This is just a quick and dirty test to see what happens if you yank out, in other words, remove the storage that's supporting a running Windows 2008 VM under vSphere. What we've got here is we've got a Windows 2008 VM. As you can see, it's running. It's using uh, an ESX host uh, running vSphere 4 uh, that hasn't been uh, changed or edited. You can see it's running on this data store. And this data store is actually being supported via EMC vPlex, which is a, a storage virtualization technology. Uh, but uh, the storage target actually for this test wouldn't really matter. Um, what you can see is that uh, this is the same test and configuration that we're using to do all sorts of distributed and, and uh, geographic vMotion testing. But once again, none of that's particularly pertinent here. For now, uh, just consider this an ESX host uh, with a, 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 a set of LUNs that's being presented to it for vMFS storage. And uh, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to just yank it out while that VM is running. It's always kind of fun to do something uh, intentionally bad and see what happens. So uh, this is the actual LUN that uh, we saw earlier in the vSphere, uh, uh, the vCenter client. Um, that detach rule is something that's used if you're using this across geographic distances for uh, uh, dispersed uh, vSphere clusters as an example. Um, and uh, the storage views in uh, vplex nomenclature is either an initiator group or a storage group in, in other storage devices. You can see that it's basically got a list of initiators. That's the ESX host. And what we're going to do is we're just going to remove the initiators, which means that the LUN is no longer going to be uh, presented to that ESX host. I'm actually remoted into this system here, which is why the uh, GUI's uh, refreshing slowly over a pretty low latency link. A high latency link. So boom, we just removed the initiators. You can see that uh, uh, EMC vPlex is going to give us some warnings because obviously we're removing uh, a storage device from its host while it's running. Um, and surely something bad will happen here with the VM as we just removed it. Like any good system, it warns you twice. And off we go. Um, so let's go and take a look at what's going to happen here. Uh, to the uh, ESX host and, and the individual Windows 2008 VM. So uh, closing out that uh, that uh, that window or minimizing it. Um, if we take a look, the VM hasn't gotten any errors or anything like that. If we actually uh, connect up to it, um, you can see that I've got a ping that's constantly going to it. Surprisingly, it's still here pinging that individual host. So let's see what happens. It's uh, still running. That's kind of surprising. Um, and here you can see that I'm actually still uh, RDP'd into that host. So the RD, you know, I'm still able to actually connect in and move the windows around, open up the start menu. Um, so uh, this is interesting. It's a little more survivable than I would have guessed. So now let's uh, let's intentionally do something that we think will uh, cause some problems. So um, uh, open things, some things up, for example, or maybe what we'll do is we'll uh, try copying this file. So if we force some I/O to occur, let's see what let's see what happens. By the way, notice it's still actually pinging. So. Uh, uh, it's continuing to be pretty responsive. Let's see what happens when we go and we do something to uh, try to uh, trigger an, an I.O., something that we know will will uh, start to kick the OS a little bit into going, hey, there's something up. I'll grab this, uh, this file and uh, copy it, and then uh, just paste it back into the same directory. So, oh. Ooh, now you can see something's something's afoot. Uh, Explorer is no longer responding. The system's still responding to pings. Oh, but here you can see it's now no longer responding to pings. So it looks like that machine is dead, right? Well, it's not quite dead. So if we take a look, uh, what's interesting is that uh, it has stopped responding to the uh, at the console. Um, and by the way, if you opened up the console here directly in, in ESX or via RDP, you see the exact same uh, uh, experience. And it has stopped responding to ping, so it looks like it's dead. I wonder if uh, the ESX host still sees the storage, because the storage, remember, has been removed. But you can see it still thinks that it's got those two data stores, which is interesting. So uh, uh, 
if we uh, take a pop back um, and uh, take a look that that uh, VM is still in limbo land so let's actually pop over back to the, uh, the machine that's pinging it and see what's going on it's still here hung at the console uh, the RDP session hasn't been dropped yet uh, but presumably eventually it would time out uh, if we go and we take a look uh, no pings have responded in a little while so you'd think that that system might be dead but take a look at this let's go in and let's uh, uh, re-add those initiators so it's been about a minute now that uh, this has been going on in fact a little bit longer than that. it's almost been five minutes um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to re-add the initial initiators which will represent the underlying storage and uh, let's see what happens So here we've uh, now successfully just re-added those initiators. So w basically what this is to someone who's not a storage expert is we've just represented the storage device to that ESX host. And look at here. We've basically just, uh, without doing anything, the host is now re-responding within uh, the uh, RDP session. It's responding to pings. The machine miraculously has come back to life. So it, it basically went into some sort of weird state, uh, an indeterminate state, where uh, it wasn't responding to pings and the terminal, uh, the RDP session was closed. Now the question is, if we, you know, if we yanked it and it was non-responsive and then we re-added after about three to five minutes, it's still running. What happens if we just leave it yanked? So once again, we've got that VM uh, up and running. We're going to remove those initiators. Um, so uh, you can find all sorts of details if you'd like in the GUI, but the GUI is actually really easy for VPlex, uh, very straightforward. So let's remove those initiators. Once again, this is going to remove the LUN or yank the LUN from out underneath that uh, VM while it's running. So we'll pull those out, fantastic, just like we did before. But the difference this time is, let's just keep it that way and see what happens if it keeps on running. So off they go. Now let's see what occurs. So we saw before what happened. You know, the uh, the uh, virtual machine started to become non-responsive, both with uh, uh, within the UI um, via uh, you know via the console or RDP, um, and uh, it started to respond to ping uh, well at the beginning, and then as soon as it became unresponsive, it stopped responding to ping. So we should expect to see sort of the same behavior once again. Let's give this. Uh, individual VM a little kick in the pants by uh, tr doing something that triggers an I.O. So if I copy and paste, um, you know, f as you'd expect to see, all of a sudden, boom, the UI becomes non-responsive. Uh, Explorer starts to hang. And if we pop over, uh, it's still pinging, it's still pinging. But after a certain amount of time, it would stop responding to pings. So one thing that's interesting is we've now let it run for 15 minutes, and uh, in the immortal words of uh, Princess Bride, there's a big difference between being mostly dead and being all dead. Because take a look at this. That individual VM, which, uh, as you'd expect, stopped responding to pings, um, if we take a look at it, remember the data stores are still, uh, the ESX host thinks they're there. They're actually not there. We're going to do a refresh, uh, which is going to basically rescan uh, or refresh the host uh, storage subsystem, and off it's going to go. And uh, let's give it a little bit of a kick to see what's going on. Uh, maybe we can remind it that it's in this weird state and perhaps crash the Windows 2008 VM. So uh, here the rescan's taking a fair bit of time. Who knows? Perhaps. This will be something that will make it uh, eventually realize that there's something that's gone horrifically awry and generate some alerts or some warnings or something. Nothing yet. Well, you know, anytime that something takes this long, you start to think, well, perhaps it's going to error out. Um, but uh, what actually occurred when I did this, uh, you know, was also a little surprising to me. Um, one thing that's fascinating is that as if we go and we take a look during uh, certain periods, 
the host is actually periodically still responding to pings. So it goes through a weird state where uh, it's invisible to the outside world, and then it's uh, invisible. Ag it's visible again. Uh, notice that it completed the rescan, and those two data stores, the VMFS data stores, are now no longer there. Surely now that uh, individual VM will blue screen or crash and be marked as being unavailable. Well, let's go and take a look at what's going on. Look, at the data stores aren't even listed there anymore. So surely it's, it's going to be completely non-responsive. Well, let's take a look and find out. So let's, uh, let's take a look and see exactly what's going on. All right. Now, remember, we're artificially creating a bad scenario here. So let's go take a look. Um, there's no particular alarms or anything like that. If you take a look at the summary, there's something a little funky. It seems to think that the data store is listed here. You can see it says the data store is finished DR1, although the storage usage information is all wrong. But the weird thing is, is take a look. All of a sudden, the host has started to ping again. So again, it's not uh, fully dead. After 20 minutes, it was still going periodically back and forth of no ping, ping. The UI was always non-responsive, but maybe what I was thinking is, if I went in and did a bus rescan on the ESX host, that would, uh, you know, formally kill it and crash it. So let's take a look at this. Uh, let's go over and uh, rescan the adapters. Um, one thing that's interesting is remember the data stores weren't listed in the data store view, but if you click on the individual adapters here, you can see that it still thinks it has three devices. Those devices I look, and of course it thinks that those are the devices that were there previously. So that devices haven't been uh, uh, removed. So let's uh, do a rescan and uh, force it to realize that those devices are no longer present. Uh, remember, it's now been operating. That VM's in this weird state where it's it's a little indeterminate. It's, again, it's completely non-responsive in the UI, um, but periodically still responding to pings. So let's do a, a, a rescan, uh, both uh, the HPA and, and rescan for VMFS uh, devices. So you can see it's rescanned the HPA. Notice the devices count has gone down. Um, so there's just a, a dummy device there. Um, but uh, all of the actual devices are gone. So now, surely, the virtual machine would have crashed. Uh, because uh, now the ESX host knows knows that there's not a data store. It knows that there's not a LUN. Um, you know, the other thing that's interesting is you'll notice that I haven't gotten any particular alerts. Um, so uh, this, is a, a, this is a little bit better in vSphere 4.1. Um, than it is in, in vSphere 4, which is the version that I'm running right now. But um, take a look at this. We'll uh, go back to this individual data store. Data stores are gone. Now the devices are gone. The data stores are gone. Yet that VM still keeps on trucking in that weird indeterminate state. So uh, you'll notice here that it still thinks that it has that data store in the UI. Uh, again, the, the, the data is listed incorrectly. Uh, it stopped paying. Does this mean that once and for all it's dead? And the answer, of course, is no, because after a short amount of time, it starts responding to pings again. So uh, this is the VM that would not die, um, in spite of doing everything that I possibly could to uh, make it realize that its storage was no longer presented to itself. Here you can see it just started responding to pings again. One thing that's interesting is the only way that I was actually able to power off this VM was to re-add its storage. So if you tried to power it off while it still has its storage, it uh, uh, it's got stuck at 95%. What's fascinating is 60 minutes later of this this indeterminate behavior, put it out of its misery. I added the storage back, um, and amazingly, the VM came right back to life. Um, so uh, there's some interesting lessons there. So here uh, I've re-added the storage and I'm able to log back in and, and have my interactive uh, uh, RDP session. Um, it's responding to pings. It's uh, fully come back to life. So you'll see here in a moment the pings start to respond. Um, and boom, there you go. So there's a few important lessons here. Morals to the story. VMs are pretty hardy. They're more than you think. Their behavior in that state is at best characterized as undefined. It wasn't blue screened, wasn't really responsive. 
and the OS behavior varies from one OS to another. Interesting.